Up next, we have, he, is, uh, he has a one-man show called Brown Broke and Barely Legal. And he's also coming up on the, uh, the next season of Narcos on Netflix. Please welcome the very funny Mr. Carlos Gonzalez. Give it up for Mr. Hector Luis, everybody. Yes. All right, single ladies, make some noise, single ladies. All right, all right. And uh, desperate, obviously, there you go. Uh, I just got married a few, uh, got married a few months ago. Uh, don't worry, don't clap. You don't know her, it's fine. Uh, at this point, actually, it's my, my second marriage. I remarried. I know, it's typical of me. And uh, such a stereotype. Just living up to the stereotype, folks. And at this point, we're thinking if we're going to have kids, so how many we're going to have, all right? Now, she's seen her sister give birth twice at this point. So she's a little, you know, a little scared, to say the least. So we've decided to just kind of put that off for now and eventually maybe adopt a highway. I think that's probably <laughs> the best thing to do at this point is just adopt a highway. Um, like I said, it's my second marriage. Um, first marriage was tough. Obviously, I'm not in that marriage anymore. Um, if that were the case, I'd probably live in Utah and I'd be married to both of them by now. But uh, no, I'm not. Um, you know, the worst is when your ex-wife remarries someone who has a lot more money than you do, you know? I know it's a, it's a low blow to the ego, but it's still, you know, it's just, it's just tough. I know it's superficial, but it's a low blow to the ego. I remember picking up my daughter for the first time at their new house in Connecticut. Even my GPS was like, arriving at the house you wish you had. <laughs> it's like, really, Garmin? Really? Why are you instigating, Garmin? Why are you instigating? Uh, my daughter's great. I have a 15-year-old. Uh, at the time, she was about seven years old when we first got divorced with her mom. It was a tough time, but she tried to encourage me. She was conscious of the fact that her mom remarried this guy with a lot more money than her father had, so she tried to encourage me. She was amazing. She said, you know, Daddy, I'm really proud of the fact that you're following your dreams. You know, if maybe we keep on working hard and apply ourselves, maybe one day we can both grow up to be like my stepfather. <laughs> <laughs> That's not really the encouragement I was looking for, honestly. But, uh, you know, I love her nonetheless. I love her nonetheless. Um, after my first divorce, I thought, you know what? I was like, I vowed never to get into another relationship. Like, I'm done. That's it, you know? Like, this is not male pattern baldness, people, all right? This is estrogen poisoning. <laughs> it was amazing. I used to have luscious, thick hair. You would have loved it, man. You would have loved it. Running your fingers right through it. And it was, it was great. It really was. It's tough. I started noticing one thing, though. And when you're in a long-term relationship, any little thing becomes, like, has a snowball effect of an argument, right? It's always like one little thing can lead me to a big argument. One day, I got a little dirt in my eye, came home, wanted to kiss the wife hello. She's like, oh, my God, get away from me. That is so disgusting. First of all, I don't even know why she talks like that. She's Irish. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, you got pink eye. I was like, no, that's not pink eye. That's it's just an irritated eye. She's like, no, that's... That's pink eye. Like, I know what pink eye looks like. That's pink eye. Like, no, it's not pink eye. It's just a little dirt in my eye. She's like, no, like, you went to the bathroom, didn't wash your hands, and, like, rub your eye. You're disgusting. I'm like, I wash my hands after I go to the bathroom. It's not pink eye. It's just an every... You know what? I'm not even going to stress this. I'm just going to take a shower, relax, and wash the day away, right? I come out of the shower, go to dry myself. My towel's wet. I'm like, excuse me. Why is my towel wet? She's like, oh, because I couldn't reach for mine, so I used yours. I was like, well, maybe if you didn't use my towel to dry your ass, <laughs> I wouldn't have pink eye. You see what I'm saying? The point is, I won the argument, and that's what matters in a relationship. Right, sir? Thank you. <laughs> I feel like sometimes we need a little higher being, a little bit of the higher spirit, so to speak. Um, anybody from Harlem? That's yeah. great. All right. I lived on 125th and St. Nick for a couple of years when I first started doing comedy. I was walking down 125th and St. Nick, and I came across a black Jewish temple. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this before. It was amazing, right? As soon as I walked in, they showed me nothing but love. They're like, yo, mazel tov, son, yo, mazel tov. Yo, shalom, me, homie. I was like, this is what's up, right? So I sat down, took everything in. All of a sudden, the rabbi comes out onto the stage. I can't even make this up. His name was Tyrone Goldstein. <laughs> And he grabs the mic and he looks out into the congregation. And that's where it hit me. That's when I realized black preachers should be at all our services because they make you feel the higher being, right? 
And he grabs the mic and he's like, can I get a mazel tov? Can I get a halaim? Can I get a shalom? All my circumcised brothers in the back, throw your yarmulkes up in the air, let me hear ya sing. <laughs> and that's when I realized this is where I belong, you know? Uh, so I converted. Uh, I'm now a black Hispanic Jew. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. You've been amazing. My name is Carlos Gonzalez, guys. Have a good night. Give it up with my top of Hector Luis. Hey!